good coffee. Welcome back to the shop. I'm Russ. Um, today I'm going to talk about remote switches. Now, that's a pretty generic term when you think about it, but in the shop, <coughs> remote switches can actually um, be very handy. Um, if you're all familiar with the computer, Alexis, uh, basically that's what that is, is a remote switch. If you buy the plugins that she's compatible with and plug your appliance or your tool into that, you can tell her to turn things on and off, and it's convenient. A little elaborate, but it works. It's a remote control uh, switch. And so I also, I bought from Harbor Freight what they call the remote control system. And it comes with one remote and three different switches that you plug into the wall and your outlet plugs in, your appliance plugs into here. These are only 15 amp service, so you don't want to plug your dust collector into this. But it works real well for shop vacs and fans and things like that around the shop. In fact, I have two of them hooked up now. One to a shop vac, my main shop vac here. And the other one goes to a fan that I have up here on the ceiling that points down here. Sometimes I want to turn that fan on and off, so it's very convenient to just grab, use this. This is always within my reach around the shop. And the third one... I try not to dedicate. I, I would like to keep this with fluid because I use it for a lot of different things that sometimes I want to set up temporarily. Uh, my glue gun is a good example of that. You plug it in, there is no on and off switch on it. So if I'm going to have it out for a couple hours, but I'm only using it five minutes here and five minutes there, I might want to turn it on and off. Well, this is perfect for doing that. So remote control switching in your shop can be very handy. Not all remote control switches, though, are wireless or voice command, you know. Sometimes the very basic ones, like on a, on a winch um, and a cable winch, and you run the cable out and you hook it onto something and you pull it back, a lot of those have remote control that's handheld so you don't have to stand by the motor while you're using the winch. You can operate it from your hand control. So, and those are handy, the hard wire ones. Uh, I have one on my... Scroll saw, if you think about it. Uh, it's a foot operated one, and you've seen those. They're about 20 bucks or more, and it just sits on the floor, and you push on it once with your foot, and it turns it on. Turn it, push it again, it turns it off. Sometimes it can be a dead man switch where you just hold it down and let up. And that's a remote switch. I have that one over there. Also, I've used power strips as a remote switch. Uh, sometimes on like on my bandsaw, I'm, I used to have a light on there that plugged in and my bandsaw plugged into the same power strip and I just turned that on and off so whenever I turned my bandsaw on, my light would go on. So there's a lot of different ways you can set up a remote switch. But also I made one that I thought was really cool and I thought I'd share that with you too, which is another idea of what you can do with switches. Because sometimes I like to use a switch temporarily. So if you all know what this is, if you've seen this, if you've ever replaced a sump pump. Now, if I call this a well pump, don't be surprised. I'm meaning sump pump. I got this off my sump pump. This plugged into the wall. This plug-in goes straight to the sump pump itself. And this one went to the float mechanism on the sump pump. So this was the switch to turn on and off. If I plug that in the wall, it would run all the time. So this is a switched outlet, basically, is what it is. Run off of the switch at the other end here. So what I did was I cut these cords off, the 10 foot long, and I put this on the end of the plug-in, so I have a 10 foot extension cord now. I always use one of those. And this one, I just put a quick little box and a switch on it to turn it on and off. So that controls this. So now, if I take this end of my plug-in, of my extension cord and I'm going to plug it in right here to this outlet. Now I have power here. So if I plug this in there, now I have power. But if I take, I have power here, but I don't have power here. If I want power here, I'll just take my switch on. Now I have power. Turn it off, no power. On, power. Off, no power. See? What do you mean you're not convinced? Yeah. Okay, fine. There's always one class clown. 
I see you in the back of the room back there yelling out. And I knew you were going to be there, so I had this ready. This is my shop vac. Power plug-in. So let's plug this into here. Plug that into there. And now I can control it with my switch. Power on, power off. So, see? It does work. But I like this plug-in, and you can put any kind of switch on here you want. If I wanted to use this as a floor switch, I could very easily put a low-profile low box instead of this one and use a toggle switch. Then when it sits on the floor, I can use my foot to turn it on and off. So I can turn this into being a floor switch pretty easily and dedicate it somewhere if I had this. Right now, I have no money wrapped up in this. This is all parts I scrounged out of my used bin. And so this didn't cost me anything. What makes this one better than most remotes, like the power strip version with the switch on it, or the dead man switch on my scroll saw, the difference between the two is where you plug everything in. If I had normal switches, remote switches that have plug-ins that has wire to them, the plug-in to the appliance plugs in where the switch is, not where the power outlet is. And that can be inconvenient when I have to pick this up and I have one or two plug-in wires on it too to move my switch around out of the way or do something. Those wires, I have to deal with them too. With this, I only have the one wire and that's what makes it really nice. So having this plug-in is a, sometimes an advantage over the other types that you always see. Now this cord, I've never seen them for sale anywhere, but this is a very cool idea for a cord where you have just a switch here and it's all run off of a remote switch. But this one I made, didn't have any money in it. So if you see a sump pump out there that has this kind of plug-in on it, where you get two wires, grab the cords because this is pretty handy stuff. The other advantage to this is I can put a 20 amp or 30 amp switch on here. And quite frankly, I could probably run a 20 amp very easily off of this same cord because uh, it's only 10 foot long. If I was going to run a super long cord of power from a long way away, then I might want to up the gauge of the wire. Um, but I think this is 14 gauge now, so you can run 20 amp easily. And probably a 30 amp, depending on your circumstances, you just want to watch it carefully. But by switching out the switch itself, I can up the amps that I can do. You can't do that with one of these. This is 15 amps and period, that's it. So they had their advantages and disadvantages. So anyway... That's just some ideas about remote switching. Uh, they are handy to have around the shop. Sometimes I use them temporary. Sometimes I use them and set them up dedicated, and they're always there. So uh, you might think about it. If you get a chance to get one of these remote switches, they're handy to have, even if you just make it. I've made one before where everything was self-contained in one box, the switch and the plug-in. But again, that puts all your wires by the switch instead of where you plug them in. But they work. So it's handy. If you don't have any kind of remote switch, you ought to have one in your shop just in case you need it. My problem I've always found when I make one, say, okay, I got a spare now. I end up using it somewhere. And so now I finally got a couple of extras. I have a couple of extras. So it makes it a little bit better to have one so I can set something up on the fly. Give it a try. If you have any comments, if you have ways that you make your own um, remote outlets or how you did it, love to hear it. Uh, I always get my best ideas from you guys anyway, so don't be afraid to uh, let me know what you think. If you like this video, you learned something here, please hit that like button. It lets me know I'm doing the right thing. Most importantly, though, come back again because we are not done yet. Nowhere near. Thanks. Hey, we'll see you again soon.